Okay, so today we're going to have a little look at the Ubuntu Mate 20.04 latest daily build ahead of the final release has come April. So it's now using Mate desktop version 1.24.0-2 and there's been a few little changes. I think they backported a lot of it to 19.10 but I'm not too sure. But anyway, what we're going to do in this video is just sort of set it up for our general sort of workflow that we would aim to get out of a Mate desktop environment and just see how we get on. So I've updated everything and we are good to go. The only thing I have installed so far is the OBS which we are recording off. So what we're going to do is start with the Mate tweak application here and then we're just going to change it to which one we want to use which is probably going to be Cupertino. I'm not going to go through all of them because I think I've recently did that with Mate so I think you probably know what's going on here. So we're going to go for Cupertino and click OK which will give you a plank at the bottom and then a panel at the top. What we are going to do though is as you can see you get a little plank icon here. So what we're going to do is open up a terminal, install Deconf Editor uh, deconf editor and then we're going to remove that icon there because that will just wind me up okay so now we're going to open up deconf editor I'll be careful um, I do believe it's in net launchpad plank docs doc one and then what we're going to do is look for something like show plank there we go show doc I is that the one? Show doc item. Let's do that. There you go. And now that is gone, which is all we want. Click reload just so it reloads the schemas and all of that nonsense. Cool. And what I've also done is I've already mounted some drives that I use across all my distributions. So a couple of external drives. So as you can see in MNT there, we have one called external and one called SSD. The SSD is where I store most of the games that I play. Um, it's an external SSD, a Samsung T3 or something. And then this is just an external driver. I'll just keep a lot of fluff basically. So what we're going to do is go into external using Kaja, their file manager for Mate. And then we're going to go into, I'll tell you what, let's just go to our root here and then go to MNT. And as you can see, there's those two partitions we were just talking about. So now what we're going to do is jump into external. And I've got a few things here that I'm going to want to install. So I'm going to use app images for a couple of applications. I quite like an app image, especially for things like Caden Live and stuff when I'm not using a KDE desktop environment. So what we're going to do is jump into app images. And we're going to get Google Chrome, Caden Live, OpenShot. I'm going to leave Telegram for now, so we're just going to copy these over to our home folder. We're going to make a folder called Applications. And then what I'm going to do is copy them here. And I'm just going to use App Image Launcher to um, integrate them into the system. Usually I would just make them executable myself and make my own desktop icon, but I can't really be bothered. So what we're going to do, do I have... App image launcher downloaded. Let's have a look. Let's go back into MNT now. External downloads. No, I don't. So, what we're going to do is jump into Firefox, which should be the latest version or thereabouts. So, let's just quickly double check that. Help and about. So, we're using version 70, uh, 74.0, which is very nice. And we're just going to grab App Image Launcher. Oh, I've spelt that completely wrong. Oh, well, it's there anyway. And I'm going to go to continuous build and just get the latest one there. It says Bionic, but I've already tested it out and it does work. So we're going to grab this one here and we're going to save that file. Oh, we've got GDB installed already, so we don't have to do the DPKG command. We'll just use GDB to install it. So we're just going to go there, click that button double click that and then that will sort of install everything it needs there and as you can see it requires the installation of one package so we're just going to go to install package type in your password and let that do that we're going to go to automatically close once it's been done installing app image launcher shouldn't say too long done so now what we're going to do is we're just going to sort of go back into our applications folder that we created and we're going to sort of integrate these with the system now using App Image Launcher. So if we just double click and there we go. So that's going to integrate it into there. We've already moved it to applications, but what that will do is just sort of create a .desktop file for it in .local share applications. So we're going to go to OK and we're not going to have it as the default. There we go. That's the latest version as well. I rolled this App Image I think last night, so this should be the latest version. 
version 80.0.3 blah 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 so there we go that's that one do the same for Caden Live it should automatically do it now I shouldn't have to keep yeah so Caden Live's already been integrated into the system and we're going to do it for the latest version of OpenShot as well there we go there's Caden Live just popping up let's close that and we're going to hide that tutorial and close that right so all of the app images I'm going to use for the most part have been installed and they should be all in here there you go as you can see Google Chrome has popped up when we type Google Chrome now what I'm going to do is my themes what we've got here is a couple of themes for the plank here and then just some icon and theme themes so let's go into our terminal and we'll just create some folders dot icons oh, dot icons and dot themes bang and then we're going to go into this and extract that into the theme folder go to home show hidden files go to themes and extract done we'll do the same for arc icons which will take a little bit longer because there's more to extract and we're going to do that into the dot icons folder now extract so while that's doing that we are also going to get our plank theme i use shade for most well pretty much all the time to be honest so we're going to go into tyler um, dot local share plank themes and then we're just going to copy that straight into there and then we're going to right click preferences here and then we're going to go to shade there we go and then we're going to bring that down to about 36 perfect okay that's all done now so we're going to now change our themes as you can see we get a nice little um sort of global menu kind of thing up here as well using this desktop layout cupertino which is very nice indeed so we're going to go to appearance now where are you appearance there it is and then what we're going to do is go to arc darkest click customize go to icons and click arc icons and that is for the most part how i like things to look so we're just going to close that now close that now close that now and just have a look very nice now we're going to go into change desktop background we are going to show the latest one that they've got here but we're not going to keep it there so this is the latest one which is actually very nice i like that a lot in fact i think this is one of the nicer sort of wallpaper things um sort of set of wallpapers for the latest issue i can't even say words today this is the nicest wallpaper out of the sort of releases of ubuntu that i've found i quite liked um was it cosmic cuttlefish i can't remember i think i quite like that one as well right what we're going to do now is go to add go into other locations go to computer go to mnt external pictures open <clears throat> there we go that's kind of my look on most distributions that i use and i think that's kind of the most that we're going to do for that so now we, what we're going to do is see what applications it comes installed with and then whether we want to sort of change certain things so it has celluloid as the default media player now it comes with gdb as we said before um redshift that's quite cool so you, redshift uh, is will change the sort of color temperature of your screen i do believe ah very cool right we'll leave that up there what we're going to do now is install steam And like I mentioned earlier, the external SSD has most of the games that I play regularly anyway, so we don't have to download them. I'll keep them on that just to save time, and then I can sort of take that external with me wherever I go, and then I've got all my games ready to go whenever I want. So that is installing Steam now. So what we're going to do now is open up Steam. Let that do its little update there. And now I want to sort of configure my keyboard shortcuts. So let's go into keyboard, keyboard shortcuts. And what we want to do is find sort of switch workspaces or desktops, whatever they call it on here. So let's scroll down to Windows Management. And we want left and right. There we go. Switch workspace, switch to workspace that we're going to go to control left. Same for this one, control right. And then we want to move workspaces with the control alt. That's how I set it up. So let's find move window to workspace. There we go. Move one window workspace on the left. So I go control alt left and again control alt right. Now what we're going to do is go into workspaces. Does it have a workspace program? No. So I'm just going to assume. There you go. And there's your workspace switcher. By default we have four, which is all I really want anyway. So that's totally fine for me. Then we're going to get closed and now I'm going to open up Steam. 
I will blur out my login details and then we're just going to sort of add our games library to Steam. Oh, still got to extract that package there. It shouldn't take too long. Installing update. Done. There we go. So I'll blur all of this out. And what I'll also have to do is I have two step authentication. So I'm just going to use my phone to jump into my emails. Bear with me. There it is. Next. And then we're sort of logged into our Steam now. Success. <clears throat> And then what we're going to do is go to library, um, go to Steam, go to settings, go to download, Steam library folders, add a new library folder, go into MNT, SSD, and Steam library, click select, and there you go. It will grab any updates that it needs to go, but as you can see, a lot of them now are already installed and ready to play, which is good stuff. All right, let's close that one, and let's close that one. Okay, that's our Steam already in setup. What we want to do now is do we have GIMP out of the box? No, we don't. So we're going to install GIMP from the repo. I do believe it's version 2.10 now, which is all good. So we're going to let that do that. And then we're just going to have a look at what applications it comes installed with. So let's start in accessories. You have Deja for your backups, Plank, which is what we're using there, Plumer is your text editor. As we said, we've got Redshift, which is nice to see there, Make Calculator. We have software updates, software boutique. We'll open up their boutique, which is a software store, to have a little look at that, see if there's any changes that I can see offhand. Nothing's in administration. Oh, hold on. Brisk menu has quit. Oh dear. Let's go to reload and let's open it again. There we go. So, in administration, we have users and groups. Welcome. Let's open up the welcome screen and just have a little look at that one. And then let's go into education. Nothing in there. Okay, has Brisk gone a bit crazy again? Yeah. Come on, Brisk. Okay, so GIMP's now installed. So we're going to open GIMP and we're going to pin it to our dock. And as you can see, it's the latest version, well, thereabouts, 2.10. We're going to close that. And as you can see, global menus all working all well and good. Let's close that one. Um, do not send telemetry. And there we go. So here's your introduction there. Um, you can sort of read that if you fancy it. Objectives, accessible to all. I really like Mate. I think it's a brilliant little desktop environment. And they were doing the whole desktop layouts sort of in its infancy, really. So let's go into the Mate tweak version for a moment anyway and just sort of... So I'm going to look at the Mutiny one as well because apart from Cupertino, Mutiny is also another favourite of mine. There you go. And then you get a panel to the left, panel to the top, and then you also get your global menu as well. And then... So that stays there. I wonder if we full screen it. There you go. Look at that. And then you get your sort of close, maximize, and minimize at your top left. Uh, we've got an error there, but that's all good. I can't send it at the moment because I don't want to log in or anything. Right. We're going to go back into Cupertino. So let's go back into Mate Tweak. So it still uses the brisk menu for Mutiny. Let's go to Panel now. And let's find Cupertino. Click OK. Perfect. Right. That's all good. So here's the software boutique where you install your programs from, and it's probably got the plugin for snaps. Um, so I wonder if we have any snaps out of the box. We do. So the snaps out of the box are core, core rating. Oh, even software boutique is a snap, and Ubuntu Mate Welcome is a snap. Okay. We're now going to close that, and we're going to close that. Right. What we're going to do now is just make sure what version of the kernel we have got. Um, is it A? Yeah. So we're running kernel version 5.4.0-14 generic, which is all well and good. And now we're just going to have a little final look at what applications it comes installed with. We're going to install htop to get a little RAM reading as well. And we're just going to make sure OBS is still recording. It is indeed. Okay, so let's open up HTOP now and see what RAM we're using at the moment. We've managed to ramp it up to about 2.6 gig whilst recording with OBS and just, you know, we've got a few things open here and we have opened a few packages here and there. 
So let's just have a final look at what we was going through. So Steam's not appeared in games for some reason, but it's in internet, okay. So in internet you've got Firefox, Steam and Transmission. No, you don't have Steam, we installed Steam and Transmission. You have the full LibreOffice suite, ah, and it uses Evolution as its default words, email client, which is my favorite email client on Linux. And then in preferences, as I say, we installed App Image Launcher, uh, Mate Tweet, Power Management, Startup Applications. Okay, and now let's go into sound and video. So Celluloid is now the default media player. I, I, was that introduced in 19.10? Um, I can't remember. We have VLC here as well. I don't think I installed that. Um, Rhythm Box and Cheese. And in system tools, it comes with GDEBI, so if you wanted to install a DPKG, that would do it for you. You wouldn't have to type DPKG I. Uh, Mate Terminal, HTOP, very nice. Uh, we installed HTOP, Magnus on board, and Screen Reader. Very good. Feels very cohesive, this version of Mate. I think it's brilliant. Right, we're going to do a very quick reboot, and then we're going to check what RAM we're using at boot. And then we're just going to wrap it up there. And as I said, all given these whole, all of these flavors, will get a full release come sort of April final release time. So let's stop the recording and reboot. Okay, we've just rebooted now, and I took a quick screenshot of HTOP before we opened anything else up. And we are using 733 megabytes at boot, and CPU utilization is, you know, what it should be anywhere from one to five-ish percent. Um, I'm really enjoying this version of Ubuntu Mate, uh, Mate Desktop 1.24. Um, I'm going to be going through all of the flavors, and as I say, come final release, I'll actually give them sort of a more in-depth review. These are just sort of quick run-throughs, and this one in particular was just how I sort of set up my daily workflow, if you like. But yeah, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.